Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about the, the wet bulb temperature, dry bulb temperature, and the, the adiabatic saturation process. Before electronic devices for humidity measurement uh, became widely used, um, w people used to use, uh, and people still do, uh, use dry bulb and wet bulb thermometer for measuring the humidity of air. Now, in this, on this slide, we see this picture. This is a illustration from the website engineeringtoolbox.com. This is a illustration of the uh, dry bulb, wet bulb temperature, uh, wet bulb thermometer. On the left, you have the dry bulb thermometer. On the wet, on the on the right, you have the the wet bulb thermometer. So the wet bulb thermometer has its bulb wrapped in a. Uh, a, uh, 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 for, for example, a, a cotton ball or some uh, uh, a wick that's made of uh, a fibrous material that can absorb water. And this is uh, kept wet by soaking the wick into a, uh, a small reservoir of uh, water. So this wet bulb wraps around the wet bulb um, of the right-hand side thermometer all the time. And air is allowed to flow over the wet bulb uh, thermometer, so that as you as you can imagine, uh, in most cases, in 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 general, there will be water vapor, uh, there will be water evaporation from the uh, wet bulb or the uh, the wick that's soaked in water, and we know that the, when water evaporates, it takes away energy, so the uh, the wick actually will be uh, will have a lower temperature, will be cooler than the surrounding air. So um, how much that temperature is lower, the T wet bulb is lower than T dry bulb, how much the temperature difference is depends on the, the, the evaporation process of uh, the water from the wet bulb thermometer. And that's dependent on the relative humidity of, uh, uh, relative humidity of the air. So, after a certain calibration, you can actually use such a device, a pair of uh, thermometers, one dry bulb, the other wet bulb, you can use uh, the, such a device as long as you keep the wet bulb, temp uh, wet bulb thermometer uh, as wick wet. You can use such a device to measure the relative humidity of the environment, uh, or the, wet, or the moist air in the environment. Um, so there, there will be a special uh, situation that uh, the wet bulb temperature will be the same as the dry bulb temperature. Uh, we rarely see that happen, but uh, in some places, at uh, some times, this may happen. That is when you have 100% uh, relative humidity in the moist air. Then when you have 100% relative humidity, the, the moist air surrounding the wet bulb thermometer can no longer uh, take in any uh, additional water vapor. So from a thermodynamic point of view, from a, a equilibrium point of view, there will be no evaporation from the wet bulb, um, this water-soaked wick. Um, and therefore, the wet bulb temperature will be the same as the dry bulb temperature. Remember, that only happens when you have an environment, when you have a moist air that has 100% relative humidity. Now, on the previous slide, we showed the dry bulb, wet bulb thermometer idea, and then it's an actual technology that people have used for many, many years to measure the relative humidity of, of the, envir in the environment. And this, that the actual uh, device, that actual process can be approximated using this so-called the adiabatic saturation process. This adiabatic saturation process is a steady state, steady flow, constant pressure process. Now imagine this, we have a control volume. This is the control volume. Um, this control volume, let me change the thickness. Okay, this is the control volume that we are concerned with. It's too thick. This is the control volume. And uh, in this control volume, uh, this adiabatic saturation process happens. To this control volume, we have two streams of uh, input and one stream of uh, output. The two streams of uh, input are 
uh, we have moist air. This moist air is imagined for the, uh, the, the, the wet bulb temperature, a uh, wet bulb thermometer case. This is the, the moist air in the surrounding uh, environment. So moist air uh, flows into this control volume at a certain flow rate, m over dot sub a, and the, the moist air has a certain temperature, T sub 1, and it has a certain relative humidity, uh, phi 1, that's, uh, that's uh, uh, lower than 100%. Now, to this control volume, we also supply a steady stream of uh, liquid water, uh, which has a, a mass flow rate of uh, uh, m over dot w. And this uh, water is supplied at a different temperature. It's at a temperature of T2. And this T2, um, somehow I defined, I de designed this process. This, so this water, liquid water temperature uh, is exactly the same as the, the outgoing moist air temperature. Okay, so these two are equal to each other. These two. These two are equal to each other. Now, Okay, now um, the, let's look at the, the, uh, the outgoing uh, moist air. The outgoing moist air has a, a must uh, 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 satisfy the dry air mass conservation. So uh, these two mass flow rates are the same, are equal to each other. Okay, these two are equal to each other. And I designed this adiabatic saturation process so that uh, there's sufficient time for the uh, incoming moist air to absorb enough uh, water vapor from the supplied water liquid uh, through the wa water liquid evaporating uh, becomes water vapor. So the, uh, the incoming moist air becomes, uh, 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 becomes more enriched in water vapor and eventually it reaches the maximum level of uh, water vapor concentration it can get, which is, which is uh, uh, the same as saying the relative humidity of the outgoing air becomes 100%. Okay, now we can set up a uh, energy balance equation for this saturation, for this adiabatic saturation process. We have uh, the incoming stream of uh, energy, two streams, and we have the outgoing stream of uh, energy. And based on the energy conservation principle that we have learned from thermodynamics, or the first law of uh, thermodynamics, we know these two um, these two quantities on each side of uh, these this equation should be equal to each other. Um, typically, we uh, we should assume that we know the mass flow rate of uh, dry air, and uh, we know we should know T sub one and we. Uh, what we don't know is this. What we don't know is this uh, initial uh, initial uh, relative humidity of the, uh, the the moist air, and that's the thing that we want to calculate through this process. And we know by design that uh, this uh, phi sub two is is known. So this is a this is a known quantity, and T sub two. This is the uh, the the dry bulb temperature of the outgoing air, and T sub one is the the dry bulb temperature of the incoming air. So both are known. And also by design, we know that the water liquid uh, temperature the, uh, into the control volume is also T sub 2. So let's see um, uh, what we know. So uh, we know this because we know T sub 2. And we know this also because we know sub T sub 2. And uh, omega 2 can be calculated from knowing uh, the 100% re relative humidity and also knowing the uh, uh, the, the, the temperature of the more outgoing moist air. Um, this can also be known uh, based on the knowledge of uh, the, uh, the, the temperature T sub 1, and this is also known, this is also known. So the only thing that's unknown, oh, by the way, this is also known, uh, this is also known. So the only thing that's unknown is this. And solving this one equation, one variable problem, we can get omega sub 1. And omega sub 1 will allow us to calculate the relative humidity of the, uh, of the initial air.